Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to create a custom JavaScript carousel with AlpineJS. Um, if you haven't watched my previous videos, there is a video for the best performing JavaScript slider I have created. And I discuss about how good it is to create your own slider and why it is very expensive in terms of performance to use uh, uh, third party libraries like Sleek or any other uh, JavaScript a carousel so in this video we will create our own um, the main reason for creating our own slider is the performance when we are building e-commerce website the performance is the number one thing we have to like consider that's why we can create a JavaScript slider with a little like CSS and JavaScript why should we use other like third-party libraries that is going to impact the performance of your website so in this video, you will learn a lot of techniques around CSS and JavaScript to create this custom um, slider. So let's start. Um, if you have watched previous video, we made the responsive design. The only thing I added behind the scene was these arrows, like next and previous arrows. So if I come to the code, this is the only button I have added. And also it has a class of relative. It has an absolute um, position of top of 50% and then minus transition in here and then left is zero for this one right is zero and this is not going to show the text but showing these uh, arrows instead so if i come here currently it is not doing anything but our slider is working so you can see this is working fine but it is sliding uh, the whole thing in here that's fine for now we will fix it quickly now so here is the thing uh, if I come here and these are part of our slider, that's why it will display something like that. Now, this is what we should do. Uh, when we click, when we slide, it should snap on the first place. Before doing that, let's see how we can uh, slide to the next one with JavaScript. Now, if I come here, let's pick this. And what is the wrapper around them? This is the wrapper around the whole slider. If you pick this, uh, you can come to the console and you can say dollar sign zero. It will uh, detect, it will select that for you. Instead of document.query sometimes, you can use this technique of dollar sign zero. It will select the selected element that you have. Now you can see this is our element. Again, I'll say dollar sign zero. Uh, there is a JavaScript function called scroll to. You can also say scroll left. It is going to uh, give you the scroll left, how much in the left direction it is. But if you use this scroll to, uh, it is going to accept um, a parameter of left and behavior in here. So if I auto complete for now, it says behavior is smooth, something like that. Now let's give it a big number, for example, 300. Now let's run this code. Did you see it is slide 300 to this? Now, if I added another number, now let's check out the slider. Let's say we are adding 600 in here. It is going to change to the next slide. And the behavior is smooth is that is smooth transition. So it should be easy to attach this to this next. So when someone click next, it should go to the next slide with a proper number in here. The scroll to is very useful, right? So that is what we do in here. So here is the first thing what you have to remember. Scroll to will be used, but we have to scroll to one number in here. And it should not stop in here. Either it go in here or in here. So that is where the CSS um, comes in, the CSS snap type. So how would you do that? In the previous videos, I talked about how a snap type is uh, helping you using this, making uh, your scroll snappy. Uh, Tailwind CSS version 3 already like comes with this feature. So if you add this snap X mandatory, so it will fix the problem. So if I come here, this is our um, parent slider that we have. We just add the snappy snap X means from the X direction, it will be snappy. And this snappy should be always mandatory. So you have this proximity, which sometimes does it and sometimes doesn't, but we want to make it mandatory always do that and also you have to add this snap alignment to the children of it we are going to use this starting but you can check the example of where it is starting when you say center this is where it is start and if you use the starting where it is starting so we are going to add that to this two in here 
which are the child of our slider now if I come this time let's refresh our page now if I come here check it out if I leave it it is not going to uh, stay in here because we have a snappy in here it is very cool right now if I come uh, and cross the 50% it is going to go to the next one and it will always feel snappy something like this I think it looks really nice and clean this way to let it still snappy now if I come to the JavaScript and give it 600 it will go to this one see how easy it is it is snap but if I give it a very like a small number of 100 let's repeat this it is not going to do anything because 100 is not a lot of num like it is not a lot so it will come here and it will not go to the next one that's why it doesn't snap now our job is to make this one work go to the next and previous okay now is where we use um, alpine.js so using alpine.js as always we always write less code and make this slider you might have seen the slider for this and the slider for down theme there's a lot of code but it is doing the same thing behind the scene now first of all these are next and previous before doing that let me show you one thing it is not a promotional video but if you come to the alpine.js they have a component and inside the components they have a lot of different components drop down moral accordion and carousel so if i come to the carousel it is not free by the way if you want to purchase it this is just 99 at the time of this recording as i said like it is not a promotional you don't have to purchase it but it is worth purchasing it has some screencast videos which caleb uh, the creator of alpine.js is teaching you how you can create all of this component from scratch and teaching you uh, since I was subscribed to the newsletter, I received some emails and watched some of his videos and they are really great. The only, the, it is not only about showing you how you can create the carousel, it is, on, it is also about creating like using different techniques in JavaScript, accessibility and a lot of things I didn't know. So the videos are really worth watching if you, have, if you can afford this, if you need this, a $19 is not a lot, you can purchase so it is like really r worth watching and it will extend your javascript skill also again so since the carousel i do have access to the source code if you come to the gist uh, that that is in here and uh, some people fork it and i started long time ago when i watched the video i don't know if this is private or not but i'm showing you how the code is done for the slider but still if you can check the slider this is how a slider is working if you watch the video this is the good like this is the the part of code that we are interested in and it is very keyboard accessible if i come in here now if i use my keyboard to navigate currently if i am uh, in here i can use my keyboard and it is accessible that's why i can use this code to do that next and previous i can write the code myself but the credit goes back to uh, kela because he did the first thing that's why so why not we use this code instead so it is not a lot of code one technique i want to show you is using a separate component instead of adding all of this inside the product page that we have it will be a lot messy a lot of people don't like javascript inside html so instead we can use the power of alpine.js on a separate component let me show you what i mean if you come to the global version in the data alpine will let you create the component outside of HTML and then add it in here. For example, this example that you see, this is the JavaScript. It could be an external file, and in here it says when uh, Alpine initialize, create this component called dropdown, and these are the properties of that component. And you just use the dat uh, x data dropdown. You will be act like you can access all the property inside this component. That is how easy it is. Or you can create it its own bundle, something like this which we are interested in now this is uh, where you create your bundle if it is drop down for us it is a slider right so i'll come here let's close everything inside this javascript i'll create a file i can give it like code inspired bundle but for now let's call it a slider only that js some people call it carousel but i like it a slider because it looks like a slider and we add this code we remove all of these uh, properties for now instead we will add these properties from here 
I'm going to uh, explain how all of this code works in a bit but for now just remember that oops let me just clean up a little bit only this part of the code is for a slider this one is for accessibility and it is really easy to use this code right so this is the component now next thing is you have to register it first you import it and then you will register it so i'll grab this code also okay before doing that just the first line we will come to the app.js that we have inside the source directory this is where we import in a sort of drop down we call it a slider okay that's great now we have to register it using alpine.data if i come here instead of this we can say a slider you can name this anything but the second parameter should match this so that is fine now we have the slider all we have to do is instead of you are writing all of this code we can come here and around this we can put it now here is the thing uh, if i come and see where can i put this that is the main question what if i create a separate component in here separate like div and how would you think like if i create a div in here so everything inside that will go here and this will be the parent that way the only problem will be like all of these classes will break down because it is not the component itself in here so i'm going to pause the video and i'll go quickly uh, see which solution will uh, fit best and then i'll come back so back to our code um, i did a quick uh, checkup of how i can do this so the reason i did this because you know this one should be in here this class span because that is for desktop version okay now what i can do is the rest of it is not related to that if i can like grab everything from here now it will still work the same so what i can do is i can put all of this code oops what happened i just close this all of this code inside of this and we can just move all the buttons probably not the buttons only the slider content inside of this something like that if you know what i'm saying because this flex is for inside of this okay it doesn't have to do with anything with the parent so that is what we do we just put it in here this is the previous and next button and let's move this relative also at the top in here because um, when we use relative this button should not go outside the box this is how we want now this will be the slider this will be the next and this will be um, this will be the previous and next button just a simple cleanup i just want to make sure it is working properly on mobile and desktop if i refresh this time now it is working properly on mobile and it is working properly on desktop as well except for the fact this one should not display on desktop so what i can do is just quickly come here select both of them and i can add a hidden class which hide them but yeah it should be md hidden it means in the medium screen it should not it should not show so if i refresh it is not showing in here but on mobile it is displaying them properly okay that is great now everything is great uh the only thing i have to do is add my component in here again i'll come to alpine.js we create the component all we have to do is use xdata and name the component in here you can pass the initial parameter if you would like but you can check the documentation of how it exactly works so in here we say xdata what is our component name it was a slider if i save it now this is the slider that we have if i save it now let's come to the code that we have in here let's refresh everything works fine but if i come to the alpine we have this slider component and it has this skip of three uh it has next and previous skip three means how many slides it should skip so i'll come back to the code that we have for this and i will say one do not skip three because skip is the where it multiply uh how many like product it should is uh, image it should skip if i refresh it again come here yes it is fine now this is not working because we didn't attach any event to the next and previous i'll come back here 
this is the button for uh, previous so again I can see at click the function was brief or for previous the short form and this one should be click for the next now where are these functions you might wonder it is inside here next and previous I will explain the code quickly but for now let's see if this is working we refresh it and let's click on this okay it is not working do you have any error yes we have an error of scroll left in here a scroll left uh, okay if I come to the code it says scroll left it says you should have a reference of a slider right so we should have a ref inside our code so where is our slider this is the slider so we should use x uh, ref in here and give it a slider name you can name it anything but since we are using a slider in here we should name it a slider let's refresh it clean everything see if we have any more error so we can fix it we don't have any error and this slider is working as expected now see okay I think it is really like working the way we want also uh, how about the accessibility if I scroll down it also have this key up and down for this this area level like carousel all of those are accessibility things which we have a dedicated video for that but for now let's come here and add this uh, keyboard accessible thing on key down left see how easy it is with Alpine right or left just call these functions now if I come here refresh it let's say we are in this slider we click next and previous not sure if this work on mobile because in mobile you have this swipe let's refresh again now it doesn't work properly but yeah that is basically how you can add it for now that's not important but we can fix it in the future um, also it shows this this uh, uh, you can see scroll bar just do a quick uh, like Google of how you can hide the scroll bar it is really easy to hide the scroll bar in here maybe uh, Telvin has the same thing the scroll bar do we have something for a scroll bar not sure but yeah you can hide the scroll bar for this one uh, using CSS but again it is working as expected now let me explain how exactly it works uh, behind the scene it again uses this scroll to in the left this is where it happens right so the first thing we find out is where to scroll previous and next function what is the difference between both of them if you check the code both of them are identical except this plus and minus so uh, the way um, the way Caleb was explaining explaining in the video was okay the only like you can pass this like as an optional parameter or you can just copy the same code and put it in here but that is a lot of repetition so he used a strategy two is accepting a function and the function will run by itself and you will pass the strategy in here now instead of that you know this part of the code that you have you can copy the same thing and put it in here but the problem is here how do you change this plus to the minus when someone click the previous that's why he uses this strategy a strategy is a function and it accept like it run by itself and it just accept its own parameter in here so when he call the two inside the two he passed this function this function is a strategy and it will run in here it will just return the value of the left how much is from the left it will calculate it in here and it will run that and the behavior is also a smooth offset is also the first child width and if you check the slider in here if you can find out the width of this then it is really easy to multiply that width three times if you want to go to the third slide something like that so you can also do some other tricky things but I want to make like extend it in the future video adding like auto play feature which is very nice and a lot of people want to have that so yeah that is basically how it works and this one is focusable when visible is um, it's useful especially when you have a link inside of this 
for now we don't have a link we have only image in here but some uh, slider have link a button inside this to click so if that is focused then people cannot go to the next slide or if it is not focused they can click on this that is for accessibility that you can have in here it uses this x inner set i don't think if if we have it no we don't have it but yeah this part of the code is to be honest extra for now but we didn't talk about accessibility but it is important to have it for now in here so yes that is how easily we can create our slider using this data slider now in the future if we ever want to create the slider we just use x data slider and we can easily also modify the values for example skip how many should you skip how many should show now how many it is showing for now is you control it with flexbox if you want to show three you can just use flexbox and display that three that is how easy it is now if i check the desktop and mobile both of them are working great that is alpine js slider or carousel i hope this video has been informative thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video probably making some more video around the shopify theme that we have in here uh, for example mega menu is remaining some other sections for the home page um, what else yeah, I think that is it for this uh, video series. After that, I might focus on some other courses. Again, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.